Now, scientists who spent more than a year studying climate change in the Arctic have returned to base with some alarming findings. Uh, the German ship Polar Stern uh, just, has just docked at its uh, home port of Bremerhaven after 389 days drifting through the Arctic. Scientists on board say the Arctic Ocean is warming and uh, worn of ice-free summers there in just decades. So here's a closer look at the historic expedition. It's September 2019. The German research vessel Polarstern sets out on a historic expedition with hundreds of scientists from 20 countries. Their destination is the polar region. Their aim to gain new insights into our swiftly changing climate. In October, the icebreaker docked onto a huge ice floe and locks into the ice. The scientists set up their state-of-the-art instruments to monitor the flow's life cycle from its formation to its gradual destruction at the end of the Arctic summer. The Arctic is heating up at a much faster rate than the rest of the world. We see a dramatic change. We need to understand that process, as the Arctic is an integral part of the global climate system. If we don't understand what's happening in the Arctic, we can't predict the climate in our latitudes. That's what we're here for. We need to collect the data so that we have a solid foundation for basing political decisions. From their floating lab, the scientists took water samples, examined the Arctic flora and fauna, measured the sea ice and launched weather balloons. All in extreme conditions. For months, they worked in total darkness. At times, the temperature dropped to almost minus 40 degrees Celsius. Getting supplies through to the researchers was a constant challenge. But everything went according to plan, until the corona pandemic threatened to undermine the complicated logistics chain. The Polarstern was forced to temporarily abandon the flow and head to the Norwegian port of Spitsbergen. We faced huge challenges because of the pandemic. We were forced to replan the entire logistics. How to replace the crew, deliver supplies and refuel the ship. We had to completely reorganize the entire process. It's a unique situation and we are happy we found a quick solution. Back at the flow, research activities were resumed. As expected, rising temperatures gradually melted the ice until, in late July, the flow finally broke apart. The crew scrambled to save their equipment. In the last 12 months, they have collected over 100 terabyte of data, which will take several years to evaluate. But one thing is already clear. The polar ice is melting and at an even faster rate than the scientists feared. Let's talk with uh, Antje Boetius, who's the uh, director of the Alfred Wegener Institute, which led that expedition. Welcome to DW. Um, didn't we already know that Arctic sea ice was shrinking fast? Yes, we did. But we've never monitored and observed the change, the Arctic sea ice dynamics throughout one year, synchronous with 100 important climate parameters and for, uh, especially focusing on the polar night when it's cold, when it's uh, dark and when the sea ice should refreeze, but probably refreezes uh, worse than before because of the warming oceans. Right, so um, we heard in the report there that you've, you've, you've collected all these terabytes of data. What is it that, that you're hoping to, to find in amongst all of that? Right, so people need to understand that the Arctic Ocean is an ocean covered by sea ice. And in winter time, there are no ships, there is no one out there around the North Pole, no data. And so our climate models depend on really good observations to fix some uncertainties, some problems that we have with forecasting. When will the sea ice uh, shrink in summertime? When will it be absent in summertime? In two, in three, in five decades? How will the Arctic Ocean behave if the sea ice goes away? And so all of these many questions that have to do with having an eye on our planet Earth, they depend on more observations. Ten years ago, such a giant mission was planned and it has now been completed. The ship is just back. And it's so important that we have these synchronous year-round measurements for the very first time. 
the last person who did such a drift eye study was Friedrich Nansen 125 years ago. OK, so th this is important to build a sort of accurate model of, uh, for, for weather forecast and, 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 as, uh, and of the way that the climate is, is, is changing. Um, I, I wondered, did, did the actual presence of the ship there uh, uh, in, uh, at the pole, does that actually uh, affect uh, such a, um, a delicate uh, environment? Well, of course, when the ship is present, the ship uh, will have an impact uh, just exactly at that one location where it's at. Uh, for example, by um, just uh, releasing some warm waters at times and those kinds of things. Always, we know that in science, when an observer is present, the observer will change its experimental system. So that's not new. But this time, because with so many people out there, they had a clear concept and observation, for example, of parts of the ice flow that were dusted, um, part of the ice flow that were free. We set up observation cities away from the ship. We took uh, robot dives. We did measurements up in the atmosphere far away from the ship, where we have samples that show that we could monitor in the areas without impacting the results that we have. So the climate change, the warming that we observe, the fact that we found out that in winter time it is now 10 degrees warmer already compared to the winter that Friedrich Nansen saw, this is something that the ship didn't cause, this is something that is for real. And it really depends, these eyewitness facts that we are communicating, it depends that we have these, that we are not simply guessing what the state of our planet is. And a quick word about coronavirus, which is a part of everyday, <coughs> excuse me, which is a part of everyday life I here on dry land. Like... <laughs> <laughs> how, how much is it, is it affecting life on the boat? Oh, that was uh, quite dramatic because from our long list of things that could potentially go wrong during the North Pole expedition, we thought of everything, but we couldn't foresee a pandemic. Now, the pandemic that had led to a lockdown of all airports and most harbors. Uh, already by March, that totally affected the way we could exchange our personnel, our teams, the sailors as well as the scientists. So we had to revise plans, we had to ask the people, can they stay longer, can they rely on us uh, to provide a new plan, to provide exchanges, provide new instruments, energy and food and so on. And eventually we managed with these fantastic teams of scientists and crew, with the help of uh, many nations around, I mean you have to understand 20 nations were involved right. in that mission. Okay, and so we, we were eventually able to carry out the mission and to pull it through, and we're well so done. happy that we did give up. All right. Good talking to you. Uh, Antje Boetius from the Alfred Wegener Institute.